Hello, happy new month. The month, of, the month of September is National Muscular Dystrophy Awareness Month. Muscular dystrophy is a group of genetic diseases which results in progressive muscle weakness over time. Even though these diseases are rare, to this date there is no cure. In the following presentation, we will be talking about a chemist who discovered physostigmine. Physostigmine is a chemical which activates muscle movement. His name was Percy Lavondrian. Thank you for watching my video. Please comment in the section below. Thank you again. Bye. Hello everyone, welcome to Family Travel Africa. This is Monta Wante, and today we're going to be talking about Percy Levon Julian. Pioneering chemist and inventor. Percy Levon Julian. Birth. Percy Julian, grandson of a former slave, was born in Montgomery, Alabama, April 11, 1899. Speaking of which, when um, Hurricane Michael came, we had to evacuate and we actually went to Montgomery, Alabama um, until the storm passed or so. So just fun fact. Early life. Julian went to a private school, the State Normal School for Negroes in Montgomery, Alabama, where he graduated in 1916. He was admitted to DePaul University in Greencastle, Indiana. Due to his high school preparation, he was admitted on probation as a sub-freshman and had to carry high school courses along with a full freshman and sophomore work. Wow, he must have been like really, really smart to do all that. Pretty cool, huh? I think so. College. Julian went to Fisk University to teach chemistry. Two years later, he won the Austin Fellowship in Chemistry at Harvard University. He got straight A's being the class's top group and received a master's degree in 1923. He accepted a position at West Virginia College for Negroes and became a one-man ch chemistry faculty. Wow. What an inspiration, you know? Wow. Just wow. Anyway, dissatisfied with the lack of facilities at West Virginia State College, he left at the end of the year and went to Howard University. He served as associate professor of chemistry for two years. While in Vienna, he worked under the eminent Ernest Spath, famous for his synthesis of nicotine and ephrodine, chemicals to help low blood pressure or breathing problems. It was in Vienna that Julian became interested in the soybean. One of the drugs manufactured with the soybean was physostigamine. The structure of the drug was unknown and it was not understood how it caused the people of the eye to contract. Speaking of which, soybean is actually um, in soy milk, soybean milk, and it has lots of protein in it. So you should probably drink it if you're lactose intolerant, like my mom and all her other siblings. Anyway, the return. He returned to Howard University with two of his co-graduates from Vienna with a plan to investigate the structure and synthesis of physostigmine. Just as the research was beginning to show promise, a disagreement with the university administration forced him to leave Howard University and return to DePaul University. Speaking of which, <laughs> my parents went to Howard University. So, yeah, for medical school. So, yay, go Bisons! Uh, Julian with his assistant, Dr. Joseph Pickle, three students began their work on the structure of synthesis of physostigmine. Physostigmine was first isolated from the seeds in a plant in Calabar, eastern Nigeria, known as Calabar beans, in 1865 by Jopst and Hesse. I don't know if that's how you pronounce the names, but I tried. Another fact, my, well, my grandparents are from Cameroon, which is probably, it's not right underneath Nigeria, but like... Because you know that curve 
that curve um, on the west side of Africa. So Nigeria is like here and then Cameroon's like like down here on the curve. Cameroon's the one that looks like a peacock facing your right or the woman in a long dress gown. Anyway, the competition. When it appeared he was about to be the first chemist to discover the chemical structure of physostigmine, a British competitor, Dr. Robert Robinson from Oxford, published a series of papers on the synthesis of physostigmine that were completely different from Julian's method. Hmm, but something must be up, you know. The implication was that Julian's work was wrong. Despite being discouraged by friends, he issued a challenge to Dr. Robinson stating that Robinson's compounds were in fact not the carriers. We shall prove the correctness of our position definitely with the final and complete synthesis of Faisal's stigma. At 10 o'clock one February night in 1935, after three years of work, Julian with Dr. Pickle and Dr. Blanchard instructed, ooh, extracted natural crystals of physostigmine from a calabar bean. The annual report of the Chemical Society of London gave a complete description of the battle. You know. Opportunity. Julian decided to leave academia and applied for jobs at many chemical companies before he was hired as chief chemist and director of research at Glyden. This was the first time a Negro had directed a modern industrial lab. His work was instrumental in turning Glyden Company's balance sheet from $35,000 in the red, which basically mean it was not doing so great. They're doing horribly. To $135,000 of profit in just one year. He also found a use of soybean protein, soy protein, to produce a new product called Aerofoam that was used to put out gasoline and oil fires by starving the fire of oxygen. Pretty cool. Owning his own company. In 1953, Julian left the Glyden Company and in 1954 founded his own Julian Laboratories Inc. in Chicago and Laboratorios Julian de Mexico in Mexico City. Also, speaking of which, um, when 2015, I was like pretty young and Vine and I and our parents went to this trip to Mexico and we were delayed in Mexico City when we were going to Cancun. And so, another fun fact. Yep. Um, he specialized in the production of substance S, synthetic cortisone, and found that wild yams in Mexico were better than soybeans as a source. His first year resulted in a profit of $71.70. But by the second year, he was up to $97,000. Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> wow. In 1961, Julian sold his oak parts laboratories to Smith, Klein, and French, a pharmaceutical company for $2,338,000, which is over $20 million now. Mm -hmm. The accomplishment. He also perfected the method of producing cordylex or substance S, difference from cortisone, by one oxygen atom. His achievements. In 1973, Julian became the first Black chemist elected to the National Academy of the Sciences. In 1991, he was elected to the National Inventors Hall of Fame. In 1999, the synthesis of physostigmine was recognized by the American Chemical Society as one of the top 25 achievements in the history of the American chemistry. That's a lot of awards for a very smart guy. Yep. Wife and kids. Julian met his wife while hired at Howard University and the two married in 1935. They had two children. His son, Percy L. Julian Jr. became a lawyer in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I've been to Wisconsin, Green Bay actually, not Madison, I don't think. When I was really young, I was younger than five, probably. I went there to visit my great grandmother on my dad's side. Um, the unfortunate happens, sadly. In 1950, Julian and his family moved to Oak Park, Illinois. 
after they purchased their home. But before they moved in, the house was firebombed on Thanksgiving Day. So unfortunate. It was attacked again in June 1951. Also, speaking of which, my birthday's in June, 16th to be exact. Pretty cool. His death. Sadly, he died of liver cancer on April 19, 1975. Thank you for watching. Please share, subscribe, like, and comment below because we need some feedback probably from you guys. So don't be afraid to. We always like your comments most of the time. This video was brought to you by me, Mbongta, and my father, Marco Antang. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.